And so the scene was set for the championship game. Michigan State against Indiana State. Both teams seeking their first national title in basketball. A capacity crowd of more than 14,000 screaming fans on hand at the Special Events Center. The city of Salt Lake City rocked with enthusiasm. There is nothing like the finals of an NCAA basketball tournament. The game was billed as the showcase for two of the nation's best players. Smooth and gifted Larry Bird of Indiana State, everybody's player of the year. A unanimous selection on five All-America teams. In the other corner, Urban Magic Johnson, the great one from Michigan State. The Magic Man had also made five All-America teams. He was confident about Michigan State winning this game. I don't scout people. I don't like to watch games. Because I know if we do the things we can do best, if we run our offense, we play our defense, then no team in the country can uh, handle Michigan State. Naturally, one of Judd Heathcote's biggest worries was how to stop the bird, who had scored 35 points in the semifinals against DePaul. Judd talked about it. Bird is such a, a superlative passer that we just felt that he could kill us as well passing as he could shooting. We instructed our other three players to play only the passing lanes and ignore him completely. Sometimes a top player just mesmerizes the other uh, uh, team, as Irvin Johnson will do on occasion. Sure enough, it was Bird's playmaking talents that provided Indiana State with its first couple of baskets. Here, he whipped one to Steve Reed. And speaking of pinpoint passing, Greg Kelser of Michigan State did it this way, resulting in a stop by Ron Charles. The Spartans were an explosive team. Irvin Johnson triggered the attack in so many different ways. Here, he grabs a rebound drives the length of the court, exhibiting the extraordinary skills that made him such a delight to watch. And after scoring, he responds in typical Johnson style. While Johnson was performing his magic tricks, Larry Bird tried to crack Michigan State's zone defense with his outside shooting. He was fouled on this play, much to the displeasure of the Michigan State bench. Coach Judd Heathcote was upset and so with the game less than four minutes old, the Spartans unexpectedly called a timeout. We thought that perhaps we were forcing the ball a little too much. We were surprised to uh, see the bird on uh, Gregory Kelzer, and I think Greg reacted with the idea that he would drive the basket and use his quickness. And uh, we thought, hey, we better slow it down just a little bit, make sure that the shot is there, the pass is there, and take advantage of the fact that uh, Larry Bird was defensing Gregory Kelzer. And, Greg in that game became more of a passer. And that's for sure. Kelser set up this basket on a fine pass to Terry Donnelly. Greg Kelser's overall performance in the first half played a major role in the Spartan success. Here, he drives around Bird and scores on a left-handed layup. On defense, Kelser was the key in helping contain Bird. He explained his assignment this way. Well, the thing that I had to do was when he came on my side of the zone, I had to definitely be aware of his presence. And when he got the ball, I had to be right there in his face. Uh, any shots that he was going to take were going to have to be contested. He, we couldn't let him have open shots. We also couldn't let him stand out there with the ball and throw uncontested passes so as to pick us apart. So every time he got the ball, there was somebody on him. And then when he put it down on the ground, there usually was a man and a half, maybe two men on him. From another angle, let's take a look at how much trouble Larry Bird was having trying to get open. The Spartans covered him like a blanket. And when he did get the ball, he had to force many of his shots. Nevertheless, Larry Bird worked tirelessly, trying to get free. Never in his career had he labored so hard to get a basket. Last. 11 minutes into the game, Michigan State increased this lead to eight points when Irvin Johnson banked this one in. The Spartans had set the tempo of the game. They were playing their brand of basketball, much to the satisfaction of their coach.
A jumper by Carl Nix of Indiana State made it Michigan State 30, Indiana State 23. The Sycamores were trailing now by only seven, despite their inconsistency. With five minutes to go in the first half, Bill Hodges tried to restore the confidence of his players. But Michigan State continued to dominate at both ends of the court. One of the trademarks of this Michigan State team was its dazzling passing game. Before the half ended, the Spartans scored on this exciting alley-oop pass from Johnson to Kelsey. It was their favorite play, as Johnson explained. It's more or less of an uh, instinct thing where he'll look at me and, and he'll break up high real quickly. And his, if this man is on him tight or overplaying him, he go right back and I just throw it. And it always worked. Another obstacle Indiana State faced in the first half was Michigan State's scrambling, clawing defense. Oftentimes, the Sycamores got only one shot and only one rebound. You won't find better defensive play than that displayed here by Greg Kelsey. Now, that's the way to play D. No one on the Indiana State bench was more frustrated than assistant coach Mel Daniels. And it was understandable. Michigan State had played exceptional basketball. And then, with only 14 seconds left in the half, the Spartans all of a sudden had a problem. Heading up court, Kelser bumped into Larry Bird and picked up his third personal foul. To make matters worse, Irvin Johnson also had three. And that certainly gave the Spartans something to think about at halftime. With the score 37 to 28 in favor of Michigan State. the special guests at the championship game was John Wooden, the former Purdue great, who had coached at Indiana State before leading the UCLA Bruins to 10 NCAA basketball championships. The Spartans opened with the second half blitz, scoring seven straight points. Terry Donnelly from the corner. Bullseye. Not so fortunate was Indiana State. Michigan State continued to apply pressure, and Indiana State didn't score the first three times it had the ball. On this play, Greg Kelser showing some of his fancy moves. A fadeaway jumper from a tough angle. Michigan State took a 16-point lead at the 16-43 mark. Again, the Spartans called on Donnelly. And the man with the hot hand made his second straight basket from the corner. What a performance. Donnelly couldn't even believe it himself. He kept feeding me in a... Fortunately, they were going in for me, and I, it, it was something different for me because I haven't, I haven't been a shooter. Donnelly's torrid shooting continued. His long-range jumpers accounted for two more baskets, giving Michigan State a commanding 48 to 32 lead. Everything seemed to be going right for the Spartans until Greg Gelser banged into Larry Bird and committed his fourth personal foul. With more than 15 minutes remaining in the game, Judd Heathcote now had to substitute for Kelser, who was the top scorer and rebounder in Michigan State history. Kelser's departure was now forcing Heathcote to make some changes. When Gregory uh, went to the bench, I think uh, we instructed Irvin to uh, kind of take over and maybe play a little bit of ball control and uh, be a little more conservative. I think we lost our momentum, and uh, giving uh, Indiana State credit, they just kept after us and kept coming back, but therefore a, a long stretch why we went almost scoreless for four or five minutes and enabled them to creep back into the ball game. And that's the kind of break Indiana State had been hoping for. From outside, Bob Heaton scores on a jumper. On defense, Indiana State played with much more intensity. The Sycamores completely disrupting the Michigan State attack. And the Spartans throw the ball away. With Kelser sitting on the bench with four fouls, Michigan State was a different team. And so was Indiana State. Coach Bill Hodges and his assistants were fired up. Watch this nifty move by Carl Nix, number 22. Four defenders in pursuit, shovels the pass to Staley, and he scores it from underneath. An important basket, and Staley's first of the game. Indiana State was now flying. Larry Bird getting the ball to the crowd, hitting from the baseline, and he cuts Michigan State's lead to nine points. With a little better than 11 minutes to go, 
Indiana State's full court press forced Michigan State into another turnover on a Carl Nix interception. Believe it or not, the Spartans had scored only one basket in four minutes of play. No longer were they in command. On this Carl Nix jumper, Indiana State narrows the difference to eight. 52 to 44. The Sycamores have the ball once again. They take their time, carefully working the ball to Bird. And he cuts Michigan State's lead to six. Indiana State had staged an amazing comeback, and Judd Heathcote was hopping mad. The Indiana State fans were delighted, but they also had reason to be concerned because Greg Kelser had returned to the Michigan State lineup. And it didn't take long for the Spartans to recover. From the top of the circle, a perfect pass and a stuff by Johnson. And he draws a foul at the same time. It's an airborne foul. And that gives Johnson two shots instead of one. Magic made them both, resulting in a four-point play. And Michigan State led 61-50 to with five minutes to go in the game. And that may very well have been the turning point of the championship. Bill Hodges knew that time was running out, and Indiana State was having trouble at the free throw line. With only a minute left, Irvin Johnson's inbound pass traveled almost the length of the court, right on target to Greg Kelser. Another beautiful play. Johnson and Kelser, partners in destruction. Michigan State led 67 to 58, and the Spartan fans started chanting. The game was just about over. Indiana State hustled down court for one last effort from Steve Reed. Topping it all off was Irvin Johnson's over-the-shoulder pass to none other than Greg Kelser, who officially ended the game with a thunderous stop. The Michigan State Spartans have won their first national championship in a 75-64 victory over Indiana State. The dream had come to an end for Larry Bird and Indiana State. Judd Heathcote was mobbed on the court. The Michigan State celebration was just beginning. The Spartans had entered what was referred to as the Magic Kingdom, and Urban Magic Johnson had a lot to do with it. He was voted the tournament's most outstanding player. And finally, Greg Kelser, who wanted everybody to know that Michigan State was indeed number one.